Okay, it is Monday, March 18th at 4.02 p.m. The Board of Commissioners of the Harvard Electric Department is meeting. Uh, all commissioners except for Commissioner Ambrosino are either present in person or on Zoom. Um, Mike Sullivan is here, as is our counsel, Eli Emerson, and the mayor from the case. Also, and Beth. And Beth. Sorry, sorry, Beth. Um, so, are there any modifications to the agenda? You can scrap the update. On development because that's in the GM report and it's for questions in the GM report, so we don't need to separate. Okay. And the first executive session for an employee matter resolved itself this morning, so we don't. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's how it That's true. Yes. Fair enough. Um, nice for agenda. I would like to. We can. One other thing. Okay. Um, the procurement policy signature, I should have had that on there. Okay. Beth had emailed you the policy that you wanted to see that it referenced. I have hard copies here of that. Yeah, I, that was in the packet, wasn't it? Yep, right at yeah. the end. Um, that's not here to process. We need to do that. Okay, let's, let's, that's all. let's put that in after the GM report. And we had parked the um, customer project policy, and we didn't finish that. And I would like to take care of that, um, time permitting, um, after we do that after the financial statements. Thanks. Are there any objections to those changes? Okay, um, which takes us to approval of prior minutes. Uh, we have minutes from the meeting of March 6th. Uh, is there a motion to approve them? I move to approve the minutes from March 6th. Okay, I have, okay I have a correction to them. Um, I did not request a discussion of items on the annual report. I wanted, it was a discussion related to the annual report. What it was, was a request that we see the report before it gets sent to the town, uh, since it's going out under the names of the commissioners. Um, so I would like to change um, items on to related to, um, I'd like to make move an amendment. Um, is there a second to that? Second. Um, any other discussion? Uh, voting on the amendment, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, okay, uh, hearing no opposition, the amendment is approved. Now voting on the motion as amended. All in favor? Okay, the minutes are approved from March 6th. And then we have the minutes from uh, February 9th. Is there a motion? I move to approve. Second. Okay, uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, so those minutes are approved. Um, and if I can sign with a pen, um, <laughs> I can't get them later. No, no problem. Um, which takes us to public comment. Eric, I don't know if you wanted to speak or if you're just here to listen to the. I was mostly just going to listen. In. Okay, that's that's perfectly fine. Uh, so the next item on the agenda is the bond bank. FEMA loan and the documents related to that. Was, was that sent to the Select Board? I had asked you to forward that to them. It did, it did come to the Select Board. It did come. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, I think I said at the time, yes, time you passed. Time you passed. It's OP. OP passed the select board and to the town's lawyer. I did okay. call OP and say well, this is common. So okay. We got you. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that we're waiting for comment from our lawyer. Okay. Least. And we're meeting Thursday. So okay. Bye. Okay. It's it's an odd it's sort of an odd construct. I don't know why. And maybe is this I don't know, Eli, if you can answer why or Beth can answer why this needs to be through the town and tied to the town's revenue right. rather than uh, it is uh, general obligation currently, so it's secured by the full faith and credit of the town's I understand that that's what the document says, yeah. but yeah. does the document need to say that? I mean, does it is, it got, I mean, can the bond bank lend on the basis of the revenues of HED? They do do revenue bonds. Um, I've never been a part of a revenue bond, even when it's been an electric department that's part of They've done it as a general obligation, but they do have the authority to issue or to buy revenue bonds from the towns. In this case, it was set up. I mean, there's 19 towns participating. Hardwick is the only one that's sort of borrowing through the electric department, though so it was set up as a general obligation bar. I don't and think, how is it borrowed? That's what I got very confused when I was reading the documents. How is that borrowing through the electric department? Well, I mean, that's how it came to me, was through the electric department. So I kind of just set it up that way. But, I view it as a general obligation borrowing, so that's why they didn't select board. So, so the issue is really what whether the select board, whether it's okay with the select board, whether the select board is going to. Uh, I, I agree. I mean, that's we set up the documents to be, to be signed by both the commission and the, and the select board. Yeah, I saw that there were two signatures, but it's, it seems sort of odd just because. Well, so I uh, we had this conversation before. So I went back and looked at um, older versions of the notes for like a capital improvement borrowing by the electric department. Um, and that was just through a bank. Um, and it was, I can't remember what it was. I assume it was secured by the revenue, um, but it was still signed by the select board. So I set it up. Uh, Especially because this is a general obligation borrow. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know about because we haven't done a capital improvement borrowing no. since, since a very, very long time. So, um, yeah. Um, I mean, it, it, it gets back to this there's no, there's what the charter and statutes say. And you really just have to interpret that because there's no like, case law that ever interprets these things. So you're sort of trying to put your, your best interpretation on what the language of general indebtedness statute say and charter. In this case, like I'm you know I feel very secure in the fact that since it's being secured by the full faith and credit of the town that it's a select board. I mean it's set it up so both bodies yeah I mean I don't because you're, you're also going to pay for it with like Revenue. Well, but it's, that's what I was looking for in the documents. So I didn't. Well, I, not. I didn't see any obligation of the electric department. Now, maybe we need to have a separate agreement with the town to to. It's a, it's, it's a weird thing, but as a guarantor or something. I mean, I guess get back. I don't. I just don't think there's a difference between the electric department and the town. There's a difference in our revenue. Right, but this isn't ultimately going to be paid. I think the assumption is it's going to be a FEMA reimbursement. That's that's that's, that's that's so that's what that's what the assumption is. I, mean, I don't know if that's. I haven't been involved with the FEMA reimbursement. I don't know if they distinguish between the electric department and the town. Uh, but ultimately, yes, they do. They do distinguish between the two. The bond bank is um, is looking towards those FEMA reimbursements as how this note is going to be paid. But ultimately, if they didn't come back, you know, they you didn't pay it all off and the electric department defaulted on the note, it would be the town taxpayers, not the ratepayers that would ultimately be on the hook. 
because it's general obligation borrowing. Yeah, no, I, I understood that. Yeah. I understood that. I just didn't know why it was done that way. See, I, I, I think this is this is a very. I mean, I'll say this like. These are the exact same documents you use for a 20 year bond with the bond bank. This is the most complicated, you know, sh I would just call it short term note, but it's on the, you know, it could be a two or five year term note. If you go to the bank and get the same loan, they're going to have like, three documents you sign. This thing, they're treating it just like they would one of their bonds. It's, it's really complicated. I guess my point is, this isn't a very well developed program. It was done really quickly in response to the flooding. And I don't think this is how they would normally do it. They had more time to put together the program. This is just, to me, it's just too complicated closing for what is essentially a short term note, just to cover, to bridge you to the reimbursement stage. Now, I, I think we haven't seen all of the documents. I mean, I just, it was it was the one thing that was attached to your email, which was a very short document. It was not what I would call the complicated. I just meant the um, the fact that you have uh, a requisition form. That's something that they use uh, with their bond process now. They don't. They won't issue your entire bond. You have to. If the trustee holds it and then you submit requisition forms as you get invoices. Were those, so. were those in, in, the, in the packet? Yeah, they should have been. Um, I didn't. Did, yep. did you see the emails? I'm trying to follow up. Um, were they in the emails? So I sent an email um, that had sort of a cover memo explaining each document. And I, then I, I, I saw that. Yeah. You saw that? No, I, was, I don't. Uh, all I saw was one document. Which was um, which was a which was a loan agreement. Did that have the exhibits? There were no, there was nothing attached to it. So there should have been. It's, it, your email indicated that there were things attached, but they weren't attached. You sent me an email with a document, then you sent another email with a document. So six documents, building documents. All those were forwarded, and then Roger had a couple of questions. Yeah. That I forwarded to you. Yeah, and then in response, I gave him like the yeah, the, and I forwarded that's an agreement. Well, yeah. uh, so I provided everything you given to me. Okay. So the things that are so there's the loan agreement. Well, first there's the resolution that both the commission and the select that's sort of authorizing this entire process. There's so a before, board before you get into that whole. Thing. Okay, I'm just seeing some stuff now. I, I hate the way this thing pops stuff together. My understanding was that the bond bank wouldn't loan to just HED. That's why it had to be at the full faith and credit of the whole corporation. Uh, would they, in this program? This program. I, yeah, they, I, they're not giving you a revenue no option in their own general option. So this was the only option. That's what I'm saying. Right, right. I mean, that's that's the way they set up this program to be a general obligation borrowing. Wait a second. No, this is not. I'm I'm looking at my emails now, and I'm just seeing an email from from the 20th of February. That wouldn't have been it. Um, There's the the 14th at 9:19 a.m. Um, I just give me top results. <laughs> it is terrible. Um, can I can I ask a question? Yes, go right ahead. Eli, yeah. Um, so in in the bonds that I remember, which probably is not all of them, but um. We've always had a townwide vote. So yeah. why is this not require a townwide vote? Um it's um there's two answers to that question. So this whole um, even if it wasn't associated with the electric department, the way these were set up as um a current expense note, which doesn't require a voter select typically can just issue those on their own, right? Um 
and then put a dislimit to a term of one year. So this oh, is sort of is. yeah. I don't know what I didn't know. I just catch that. Yeah, yeah. So the process that they're sort of set up for the flood recovery, whether you're doing it through a bank or here, is you do a one-year current expense note. Okay. Um, and that then makes sense. Yes, yeah. that within a year with a refunding, and that uh, neither of those under you know, right because it's only a year. And the, but the refunding note can be as many years as you want. Um, that um, only requires select work to do so. If it wasn't associated with the electric department. It wouldn't require motor. Um, there is other provision when it's associated with the electric department. Uh, if, as long as it's all your borrowing doesn't exceed 50% of your assets, it doesn't require motor. But either way, the, like, you know, uh, the village of Johnson is doing a loan too. Mm -hmm. um, and they, um, it, it may be for a water treatment. Plan, I don't know, but they're not doing it like through the electric department. It's just the village of Johnson. But there, um, this summer they borrowed however much on it as a current expense note, mm -hmm. um, and then with this loan they're replacing it. Their like, community national bank or union bank, they're replacing that with the bond bank's loan as a refunding note. I think that is it's a six-year note. That it's just the length was sort of conservatively how long you think it was going to take to get through the reimbursement process. But under Vermont statute, you can the select board or the mm -hmm. trustees in, in uh, Johnson are allowed to refund any lawfully issued note um, without having to go to the voters. Mm -hmm. So, and that's sure this well, happened in 2011. For the um, Irene mm -hmm. flooding. So, okay. this is a structure that uh, Paul and people at the LCT and Bond Bank and a bunch of the other commercial banks set up as sort of a way to respond to emergencies where you needed really quick access to cash to start paying. Yes. Okay. I, I apologize. When I had scrolled down before, it's a, it's like seven emails below. It didn't scroll to it, but I but it's, see what it's fun too. Like, that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of documents associated. Yeah, no, I can see that now, but I, I yeah. saw a reference to them, but I couldn't find them. And so this would be typical of if you were doing a 20 year bond, yeah. bond bank. They yeah. just sort of stuck yeah. this process into their typical bond bank, bond issuance process. And it's a little funky from my perspective. Yeah. I did review the loan agreement. Yeah. And the one thing that jumped out at me was the prepayment. Not that there's necessarily a lot of chance that the pre, you know, that we're going to prepay. Yeah. There's an obligation to prepay at least 50% of the FEMA money, which is fine. But if we wanted to prepay, it's only with their, otherwise, it's only with their consent. Now, I think it's pretty remote that we would be prepaying, but it, 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 it you know, <laughs> we should be able to prepay if we want to prepay. I don't know if there's any ability to, you know, negotiate that or not. Um, they've been pretty, I, I don't know why they, you know, why they would have a problem Unless there's some part of this I'm not catching why they would have a problem with you prepaying if you had the ability to. What's been what's been a concern with the prepayment is that um, I think a lot of the you know they weren't they weren't they were thinking that the reimbursement money would come in and so this loan would be the lowest priority to pay off because it's the lowest interest rate. Um, and you want to either do work or you want to pay off higher interest rate deficit. And so people are really concerned like, wait, well, you know, this isn't enough to pay off my existing loan note that I took out during the summer. Uh, but then you're going to force me to pay this one down and then my higher interest rate one's still going to be outstanding. So that was the concern most people had prepayment. Well, but this, uh, yeah, but this doesn't force you to, it forces you to prepay with with 50% of the of the reimbursement from FEMA. Yep. But otherwise, it says the loan may be prepaid by the borrower prior to maturity with the prior written consent of the bond bank. Why, why do they have the right to consent? Well, so typically, yeah, this is, this may be left over from the loan, the bond loan agreement, because you can't, you can't, Repay bonds. 
That's why they, but, they, but this isn't the bond. Right, but I don't think they you don't really think they changed. You know, yeah, I mean, if, yeah, when I mean, you, you know, go on through the loan agreement, like referred, actually, it might, I don't think it does in your version. It referred to these bonds and not no. And we went back and revised it afterwards to take out the reference to it as bond. But so they, they're definitely, they're using their, their bond paperwork or forms for this note. That and that's the structure of the closing is just like, you know, just like a bond. Again, it's pretty clunky for what's a shorter term. And given that it's a very low interest rate bond, I think, you know, prepaying is, is uh, remote. Yeah. But uh, did anyone have any questions or comments on this? Roger, Nat, Bonds? Nope. Um, I, well, I think you, this question has been asked. Um, there are Exhibit A, which basically sets out the loan amount amortization schedule. That's something that Bond Bank is going to circulate. I'm a little surprised it hasn't come yet. Um, but that'll get, they'll circulate it. And then when I get the documents back, I, I kind of just organize them. I'll put the exhibits back in the loan agreement, and then I'll bring that to the bond bank for the closing. Uh, the reason I didn't include the exhibits is because, say, one of the exhibits, exhibit B, is the form of the bond or the note that you need to sign. But then I have, you also actually have to sign the note itself. So that would be confusing to provide you exhibit B, which is just the form of the note in the actual note. It won't, it won't so, confuse me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they won't confuse, confuse me. There's plenty of it. Sometimes I'll, you know, you'll, I'll send it out, but and upon closing, and they'll send me back all the exhibits signed. But I've, the I've, had the, I've, had, I've had the same thing. Yeah. So I've had like, the same thing. I'm just going like, to not send the exhibits. If someone wants to see them. I would like to see the exhibits. I did. Um, Anything that we may need to sign, I want to see, and yeah. I want to see it in one document. Yep. Um, well, I think Roger asked, for the entire loan agreement of the exhibit. So I just sent that in separately. You just sent it? I don't know, Roger, didn't you ask last week for that? Well, I was looking for the exhibits because I didn't see the details of the loan. Yeah. For example, the interest rate term, et cetera. Yeah, which you wouldn't see in the exhibits anyways because I didn't have that information at the time. Um, but I did send the loan agreement with the exhibit so you could see what the exhibits look like. I think so. See, that's what I don't have. That's that's a, it's an email that you sent at 348 on the 14th, where you say I didn't provide any exhibits because it gets confusing. Here's a complete loan agreement with exhibits. Exhibit A will be filled out by the bond bank and should be circulated shortly. Exhibit B is filled out in this version. And then it Was goes there? and then it says dot 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 and then there's not there's there's nothing there. I um I can't remember what that was something Mike or Beth forwarded to me and I just responded to them or if I responded directly to Roger, but there's definitely this was this was a response that you sent to Mike, but we don't have but we didn't get that document. What I what I have is an email that Mike sent that has seven documents attached to it. Yeah, that was the original <laughs> one set. Um, and that was what I didn't see before. So and then and then I have um the loan agreement. That might be the one is that the one that has the exhibits? No. If it doesn't say for signing. No, yeah. it, it doesn't it doesn't have the exhibits. It's 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 a you know it's a it's a sixty nine KB word document. <laughs> well, the exhibit. I mean, it's only a twenty page document. Exhibit. So. Yeah. so you sent me an email on late Friday afternoon, Eli, that I just this moment forwarded. That's hard to collect your department. Okay. Um. The other stuff that. Was in response to Roger's questions. I forwarded as soon as, as, soon as I got it. Do we? What was the time frame that we got to? 
Uh, the closing is the 26th, which I think is next. It's next Tuesday. Tuesday. Um, so. If I can say, if I can say something, um, the information I got is they said they need the documents back by this Friday in order to not delay any closing. I mean, I just, I've been putting in my cover memo that I needed them back uh, 22nd, around 22nd to be able to just- So we have to out. take action today, and at least insofar as the electric department is concerned with the select board's meeting on Thursday. I, I have a question uh, related to that and the, uh, the urgency. Um, and maybe since Eric is here, he can comment on as to whether it's a plus or a minus. Is would it be a plus to have Eli talk to the town's council counselor, uh, you know, tomorrow between now and your select board meeting, so the two of them are fully up to speed, and we don't have that potential for your attorney to say, "Well, I, I need these questions answered," and then we get a a back and forth, back and forth that gobbles up days that we don't have. Is there a way to, are you comfortable with that being productive and no issue? I can I can email Ed and just ask if he has any questions. Can you just call? Yeah. Yeah, and it's really, a, it's a matter of what I'd imagine is questions, but also issues and, and potentially as a way to work through issues. If, if there's a form of something that would be an issue that you can see a path to resolving so that what goes to the select board is as free of issues and obstacles as possible. Well, I have their issues. I mean, I don't, typically you don't negotiate the loan documents for the bond bank just because there's you know, kind of- Yeah, company. understandable. Yeah, sure. I mean, I can alert Ed if you guys feel that there are issues with the documents. I don't know. <laughs> from the loan agreement, which as I said, the one thing that just seemed very odd to me and it was. Yeah, I mean, the, the loan agreement. Most of it was pretty plain vanilla. Yeah, and there's the resolution, which is really just authorizing the official signers and us to uh, take the rest of the documents through. Um, there's the note itself. There's a receipt. You have to sign a receipt for the funds um, that available for the closing. There's uh, the requisition form, which needs, Beth, is that something you're taking care of? The requisition form and all the attachments? Uh, when it's needed, I submit the requisition with all their forms they asked for. Um, there's a treasurer's certificate, which is basically, it's a pretty standard form in a bond closing. It just says the treasurer agrees to provide whatever financial information that the loan agrees to the treasurer. Tom, Tom, you chase. There's a oh, 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 for the town, it would be the treasurer for the town, right? Yeah, because we, we don't have a treasurer. Yeah, I mean, I just assume that the elector, when it says clerk or treasurer, the elector department. Um, um, there's a authorization form for authorized um, representatives, just people who can work with the bond bank. Um, it's not uh, the main document is the loan agreement and then the note and settlement. Uh, if I can say one thing, Eli, um, the document I sent to you this morning. The bond bank said me a document directly that I just got this morning and I shared it with Eli and Mike. That it's a commitment document that they want signed and returned by tomorrow. Yeah. So that, that's Mike, yeah, I put a copy in your folder. Yeah, I mean it's pretty standard in the financing that the bank sends out a commitment later letter early in the process where you you know they commit the, the terms they're providing it. Very familiar. Yeah. So this is the this is that letter. They want that signed and returned. Um, signed and returned by who? Well, that's it. So typically, what the the resolution would, you know, on behalf of a, a board, the commission, or 
select board would authorize particular people to sign documents. So in this case, I have the chair of the select board is the one who signs the loan agreement. So unless you know there's some some other person you want doing it, I just, just assume that the person when there's one person that's not the clerk or the treasurer signing the documents, it's the chair of the select. And that's going to be satisfactory to the bond bank when it's the town that's on the hook. Uh, what do you mean? It's the chair. Of the, the, the reason the chair of the select board can sign it is because there's the resolution that the entire select board is adopting saying that's it's authorized to sign it. It's the, the chair of the select board, the chair of the electric department. Um, in this case, because it required both. Yeah. And only. The loan agreement only needs one signature as the chair of the select. Okay, I thought I would see chair of the electric department. That's why I was confused. Yeah, so the loan agreement should say chair of the select. That's, it's, it's, it'll have to clerk one signature on the chair of the select. Sorry. I'm trying to download the whole packet and it's. Well, you can come on. You're not going to have it all printed out? Yeah, he does. Which I guess we could have been looking at. Uh, do you have the loan agreement? Uh, there's two of them. We're looking in piles of two. Right. This is the loan agreement with the exhibits. And that's the chair of the select board that's signing the loan agreement. Okay. If you guys so could each have one of these, and I could look over my shoulder. So, so what? I, I don't know what, what's over there. All right. Well, good. Well, now we can walk. <laughs> so, so this is the this is the whole pack. So this is the resolution. This is kind of the document that authorizes all these other documents to be executed. So this gets okay. signed by both the electric commission and the select board. That's just like a cover. That's a cover. Okay. So that's the res resolution. Um, this is, I already gave you the other thing. I've got in, the resolution I've got pulled up. Yep. So I've got that here. And then you have the loan agreement. This only needs to be signed by the clerk and the chair of the select board. The next most important document is the note itself. And that gets signed by both the electric commission. Hey, Mike. The, uh, it looks like Mike Ambrosino's in the waiting room. Wow. And then it's his chair select Thank you. board. And that's yeah. I, I just I'm doing with what the I get it. This this is how the the uh bond bank has been given. So that's the treasurer certificate just saying that they'll sign them. Okay, and these are these are uh, those are these are exhibits. Just they want to use an authorized okay. representative. Um, there, Mike. So, I'm here. Okay. He's not there, obviously. And then, sorry, I didn't see you in the waiting room. Roger just spoke me. Not a problem. All right. So, this is uh, we're just walking through all the long dots. These are this is probably a packet of all the documents that need to be signed. The first one's the commitment letter. Okay. And then there's all the other individual documents that we just circled. Oh, so, oh, so the commitment letters not here. Yeah, so I think see, these are the ones, I think if, if these are the documents that should be signed eventually. Yes. Okay. It's got the commitment letter, it's got every other document attached to it. So. Um, should I go over to? I don't, I mean, eventually, I think since you have the, well, I'm not sure there's enough signatures on the electric commission to sign that today. So yeah, well, I can run the run. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm. I mean, I don't think the signing is probably. Oh, completely tonight. I think I should pass it. What? I have a question. Yeah. It says it's it is the money to be borrowed by the credit of the child starts with the electric department. But it's not. It's being borrowed on the full time. I'm sorry. I'm just, words matter, and I am thoroughly confused. I mean, if you, if you view the things 
as two separate entities, I guess, but they're one separate entity. It's just a department of the town. Town has tax base. But it's hopefully the credit. I'm not questioning that the town can do that. I, I just, this is the resolution that you're asking for the electric department to pass. Well, this is pass the same resolution. Well, but it's not, it's not a joint resolution. This is just an individual resolution from the. Um... Oh, it, it is confusing in the loan agreement too, with the, the town and park electric department of Vermont municipality. Okay. Well, we're part of this. Well, you guys, that is the municipal. We're in the department. Okay. No, but it doesn't say that. But it doesn't say that. That's what's confusing. Yeah, it says a municipality, yes. a department of a municipality. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, then there's the, uh, we're jumping back and forth. I'm looking at this resolution. To a $200,000 line of credit with Union Bank. Why is that there? This is what I'll bring down. Yeah, this is what Mike just said. Yeah, that's, that's the renewal of our. Yeah, that's one. So you sent the wrong thing. Sent the most recent email I got. Okay, well, that's why I was here. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's in there. Like, from my own education, HED is not, correct? Like, CUDs are municipalities. HED is not. Uh, it is completely a municipality. And HED itself is. Yeah, it is. A municipal, it is part of the municipal corporation of the town park. Right. We are like a subsidiary, not our own. Well, I mean, if you think of like the highway department, of yep. town, it's just like you wouldn't. But you wouldn't call the highway department a municipality. You would call it the highway department of a municipality. Okay. I mean, it's, I, this is the way the bond bank has been. I mean, the application submitted to the bond bank said the town, the part of the electric department. It doesn't matter from my perspective because it's the same thing. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't mind in 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 this resolution that I'm now reading the right resolution, uh, where it says town of part of electric department herein called quote municipality. You can call it bananas, so you can call it municipality. That's that's fine. Okay, well, we can't unanimously find anything because we don't have all the commissioners here. We, well, we could. Mike, did Michael understand yep, anything? There. Oh, there he is. Hi, Michael. Mr. Mr. Phone. <laughs> Actually, I mean, we could still be unanimous with less than the whole commission. So we don't have schedule exhibit A yet, right? Correct. So we can't pass this resolution until we have exhibit A. Because it says respecting a loan for the bond bank in the amount of one million two hundred fifty-six thousand repayable at interest as follows. And it says as per exhibit A to the loan agreement attached here too. Well, I mean it's just pretty I mean it's how we have to do these. Bond closings is oftentimes you have to sign the documents in advance, and I hold them in escrow essentially, so that Exhibit A comes in after you sign them. If you don't like it, then you just don't close on it. But you know they set these things oh, up. Well, so. you didn't say that you were holding things in escrow. Oh, absolutely. Sorry. <laughs> that is like I'm holding these in escrow until the closing on the 26th, um, and. 
The problem I have though is is passing a resolution tonight that says that we're going to repay it with interest specifically set out, and we don't know what what it is. Okay. I mean, I just and 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 I, I would I would be more comfortable calling a special meeting. That's totally your right. I don't know when Exhibit A is going to be available, so that's why it's usually. The way we try to we have the documents that need signatures. We get signatures on the signature we page. Can't, and we can't vary the language of it. But if we know, I mean, we know some things with not to exceed, but, uh, but can we change? In here? The resolution is not, that's one that we. Sort of standard use in oh. these trends. not one of the loan documents that the bond bank circuit. So you're free to change it as long as it's authorizing you to enter into the loan documents. Do we interest rate is still yes, do we know what the interest rate is? So I was going to say we know it's 1.7 percent paid biannually until we get our payment reimbursement, which will be 75 percent or more. At which time we'd have to get a note for whatever. Well, that, that's so that's a, that's a separate thing. I, I mean, if we can, I'm comf I would be comfortable passing a resolution that says you know that we're it's a, it's a loan for a million four hundred and six thousand with an annual interest rate of and specify what the annual interest rate is for a term not to. <laughs> The commitment letter says the interest rate is 1.3 percent. Nice. And it's interest only biannually, correct? So reimbursement that. Yes. It's actually it's the first two years that it's interest only. Fine with referencing the commitment letter. And 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 you know on, on the terms set out in the commitment letter, you know generally on set out in the commitment letter, but um, but not referencing Exhibit A when we don't have Exhibit. A. I'm sorry to be a pain that way, but. so um. Now, who needs to sign the commitment letter? Is that, that's, and that you need by tomorrow. You said? Correct. So can the electric department sign the commitment letter, or does it have to be the town that signs the commitment letter? So in my understanding of the commitment letter, it's the only money person making a commitment is the bank. It's, it's, so, it's, it's, I don't well, think it requires well, it's, special it's, authorization to say, you know, if we enter into this loan, these are the terms we're going to. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's. A... On the commitment letter, it says Town of Hardwick Electric Department, and then it has the, the by title and date. I, I, um. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have enough detail, arguably. Um, and I don't know what Vermont law is. I don't want to test it out. But there's, a, there's pretty much a, a a fair bit of detail in here that, that you could construe it as a commitment if, if the bank was up to there and the, it, but we're committed to. But that's OK. So I, I realize this is not sort of the timing is not great here, but I mean, the bond bank didn't actually approve any of these loans until March 12th. But the way that all the select boards have their meeting, it's basically every two weeks. So you have like a two week window between when you actually got the bond bank to approve a specific amount and when they close. So it's really hard to schedule um, meetings where, you know, the group of board can get together, approve the things and sign them and then have them all ready for a closing. So in some ways we're, I mean, this is a really 
great program, low interest rate. Just trying to make sure you guys get access to this because I, 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 there's no criticism of, this, of, of the program. The problem is is the document, and you know I, I I'm I'm just trying to read the whole resolution, which needs to be read into. Well, I mean, the resolution is set up for it to be a resolution also of the select board. Yeah. And it needs to be the same. This will be set up as one resolution. So if we make a change here, it's going to affect what the select board is going to have before it. But there's enough. Did you, did you see the, the commitment letter? No, but I saw the resolution. Okay. Um, the relevant part of the commitment letter. If you change the resolution to reference the commitment letter, um, I'm just trying to read the rest of it. Eli, did you say this was due tomorrow? Did you um, say this was due tomorrow? No, I think Beth said that the commitment letter is due to be returned to the bond bank tomorrow. I need to have all the loan documents signed and ready for a closing of the bond bank on March 26, which is next Tuesday. Is there any disclaimer at the end of the uh, commitment later, like you have when you buy a car? Hey, you have seven days to change your mind. <laughs> Maybe just sign it. Hey, I give you a couple more days to look at it and change our mind. Well, Nothing going to change our mind. The commitment letter doesn't force us to go forward with a loan if we decide not to do it for some reason. I mean, typically, a commitment letter is to lock in the rate. The bank locking in the rates so you know what you're going getting into as you go through the approval process it's just unfortunate right commitment letter came out exactly at the same time you guys are looking at the loan documents normally you, know, you do this 30 days before you close on the loan not you know it's the exact same time you're looking at the loan documents so we could sign the commitment letter and we still have a week to go through all the paperwork to make sure we're okay Yes, except I need to collect the written, the, the original signature documents um, with both the commission and the select board signatures, you know, get them ready for a closing on uh, next Tuesday. So that can take some time. And I have, there's nine other towns I'm working with that also need their documents processed in the same way. So again, this is, not the most the optimal way to be doing this, but it's such a good program that you know you really want to take advantage of it. You guys, I think, were the highest of what your request was. You got ninety two percent of what you asked for. There are other towns that got eleven percent of what they asked for. Wow, yeah, it's great terms. It's it's no it it. it, it it would be crazy not to do this. We need to just find a way to do it. And it I think it's totally acceptable to reference the commitment letter instead of exhibit A. And that you're allowed to edit that resolution however you see fit, because that's not one of the loan documents. It's just what we need to authorize the loan process or the execution of the loan document. And when we're drafting this originally, you know, you kind of think there's always going to be more time and that the bond bank would have circulated exhibit A by now, but they haven't. So I have drafted read the resolution. I've read it, yeah. Are you okay with it? Uh, I, mean, I realize you don't have counsel here. Yeah, I don't. So the only so I my my big question was why didn't why doesn't it require a town vote? Which Eli has responded yeah. to, and um, I expect Ed will also respond to. Um, so, this is also the 
we talked about the two notes. So that you guys are doing the current expense. So this is a one year note. You guys have to replace that in a year with a refunding note because the current expense note can only August. That's that's yeah. That's not that's not the simulation. Yeah, so we just need to hear that from a select board. I feel, I mean, from what I know, I feel like we're just needing to hear back. Council head. And I guess the question is will be whether the select board needs anything from the electric department. Yeah, so, yeah. Besides, so you know, the resolution approval. I mean, I would think so because I think I'll be in a position having to be. I'll be in a position to answer some questions. And if, if somebody also, if a representative from the board were to come to the meeting on Thursday night, that could be helpful too. But I think um, it's pretty, like, I think I understand you're borrowing, looking to borrow 1.4 million, a lot of it's for wool cut and for other expenses. Then this uh, in response to the flooding, there's going to be payment reimbursement. These are the best terms we're probably ever going to see, or maybe not. Maybe for a long time. time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we, we need to change. So expecting a loan amount and with interest and well, I think one of the things that students of having it explicitly be in the name of the electric department was if ultimately you have to recover some of these breaks. If we talked about how really you know, PBC is looking for you to have some debt. Oh, I think, it should, I think it should be in the name of the electric department. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's for our expenses. Right. I just mean, I think for the documents to explicitly say yeah. the electric department, in a rate case, the PUC will see that and say, all right, these are electric department expenses. Let's borrow money, finally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to think of that. Uh, reference this. So this would be in the, the commitment letter. Sent by the bond. So, so issued by or sent by the bond bank on March 2024. Okay. Respecting the loan. I'm going to just handwrite it in. I don't know what else to um that's fine i can produce i think the signature page is a separate piece of paper it is a separate piece yeah so i can you, can you just make it i can revise it and then i can send you guys for the select board to make a clean copy of the sheet in the somehow the since you're going to reference the term sheet then that also looks like for you because the same question is going to Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Absolutely. I, I think what you should just do is you guys should take this packet of documents he's uh, working on now, and those will be the official signing version. I'll just, she makes to the resolution, I can just create a clean version ultimately so there's no handwriting on the front. That's why, I mean, the, the signature page is a separate page, so you can make changes to the Body of the document without messing up the signature. Makes it sound like you can have it have them signed for anything and we can change what it was. Yeah, well, <laughs> you should, you, but what could happen here is if one of the um, one of the towns decides not to go through or they don't have the right uh, reinsert on. Requisition documents for it. If someone pulls out, it may increase it. So, I mean, I guess it, you could increase the loan. But here's a good example. So, on the originally, when I drafted the the note, it said um, payments, interest payments, or something were due. June and December, yeah. but they changed the dates after I created the documents of March and September. But those kind of just like changes that happen after I created the document, the resolution that's going to make ministerial changes of the parents allowed. 
do that. So what I would do is, even though the document you guys signed says installments are June and December, I need to edit that so it says March, September. That's the way the bond bank is set up the commitment letter. Mm -hmm. But that's the idea. Like it, there's just a lot of times when you guys sign these documents, not all the information is ready yet. Like these are maybe a good example. Like the bond bank has produced that yet. But I need to get the signature on it's early enough in advance to be able to get everything ready for closing. So, do we need to read the whole resolution into I, the record? I'm not. I, I'm. I'm comfortable with adopting the resolution, having it attached to the minutes. Uh, now, the people on Zoom have not seen the resolution. Um, it's going to take 15 minutes to read the notes out. Um, do you want to just summarize the resolution? I, I can do a very general summary of it, which is, I mean, what it is doing is authorizing the town a part of the electric department, both the select board and the board of electric commissioners are adopting a resolution that allows the town to enter into the loan agreement and to execute the loan documents. Um, it is authorizing the officers to sign certain documents, so the treasurer, the clerk, and the uh, chair of the select board. It's authorizing us um, to complete the, the documents and deliver them to the bond bank. The, the services. I mean, it's also the act necessary under the statutes to borrow money. It has to be an act of the electric commission and the select order to legally borrow the money. So this is what the resolution is doing. Do you do you need more? We don't have this on on. We don't have this where we can send this to people if they can actually look at it. Didn't they get it? That wasn't one of the seven documents. This is one of the seven. Yeah, this is so, yeah, I'm, the only thing they wouldn't have is the change you made. Okay. So the change. So if you have, if you then you have the document, and the change that I made was to take out the reference to exhibit and and to say respecting a loan. In the amount of a million four hundred and six thousand with interest and substantially on the terms as set out in the commitment letter issued by the bond bank on twelve. And the commitment letter, which you don't have a copy of, right? Right. Um, sets out the amount and the interest rate of 1.30% semi-annual payments of both interest and principal on March 1 and September um, 1. And this is, so interest comes due on, on in 2024, principal in 2026. And that's what, that's what exhibit A would show you. Yeah. <laughs> we saw it. Um, and uh, the, the, the main covenants are 50% uh, of FEMA, uh, payments need to be used to reimburse the loan. Um, there need to be quarterly um, reports to the bank beginning on March 30th, 2024, with respect to the FEMA uh, program and audited financials um, ending immediately after the first year of loan amortization. Um, and the language on that, though, is when it's published, which was great. Um, so it, it doesn't tie us into 
a particular, um, it's, it, it doesn't say 60 days after the end of the year or 90 days. It's whenever we're done, they, they get a copy. Um, so that's, that's, that's the commitment letter in a nutshell, which is about all that it is. Um, so do we have a motion? To adopt the resolution. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And 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 everyone has said aye, so we are unanimous. Um so the resolution is adopted. And I think we, do we need a separate resolution on the commitment letter. I would like a resolution on the commitment letter. Um, I, I would like to move that we enter, that you authorize, I guess me, or is it to sign the commitment letter that I just described um, on behalf of the electric department? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, it's approved, and I will go and sign this. So, just um, logistic standpoint, the commissioners need to sign the resolution and the note itself. Everything else is going to be either, well, the select board signs those two documents as well. But every other document is going to be signed by the chair of the select board or, or whatever. So I think once those documents leave here, it's just the note and the resolution that the commissioners need to sign, and everything else is going to be in your name. I'm happy to describe that, but it's just it's the way it's set up. It's the clerk, the treasurer, and the chair of the select board are so doing the individual signature. Mm -hmm. And, and so Eric will need the revised language and the resolution for the same board. That's a moment that copy of the um, commitment letters. Ideally, that goes to town manager and right. And then, so, but we need to keep uh, a set of documents for some. So, this is going to be the documents that gets the set of documents that get signed. You have the commitment letter already signed on here. I signed it. Yes, yeah. but the you have the resolution which needs signatures of the commission. Ah, uh, so like, okay. So, so when you can get two of our signatures to today, right? I tell you, you can get that more. Yeah. Is there any provision for counterparts on any of these documents for signing in counterparts? You mean like uh, on separate? Yeah. Uh, on you can't do that. You just need originals. You can have a separate signature page that just has you know one person's signature, mm -hmm. okay. but it has to be original. Yeah, and and we only do one set of originals. Yes. Okay. So the bank keeps us ultimately keeps the originals. Yeah. And we just get a copy. Yeah. Yeah. It's a copy. So but I don't. I shouldn't take this because it's okay. Oh, the, those are the official signing version. But okay. so just so you know, it's the note. And the resolution, two separate documents that need commissioner signatures, and then everything will be turned over to the town to get select board signatures, treasurer signatures. But the note doesn't need to be signed now. The resolution needs to be signed. The note won't be signed. We need to get, we need to have them before before Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of time, so I think everything should just get signed, and I'm going to hold them in escrow until we're ready to close up. And you just need a majority of the commissioners. Yeah. Because do you want to pass that around to the folks who are here? Yeah. Okay. Lewis, I'll well, pull out the one. Pull out, yeah, pull out the pages. There's the resolution. That has a signature line for commissioners. And this is the next one. Yeah, you will have a significant line, but it's 
Okay, and then like you're going to change the body. No, no, he'll change the body, but there's a separate signature page. Right. So, uh, so just, okay, that's select board. This is us. Yes. Okay. Well, it says by. Oh, this is. Oh, I see this one, two, three, four. This five lines here. Okay. Okay. Just Well, I was doing, I wasn't doing, I was having to sign your Because I, I mean, it gets done in the wrong place yeah. all the time. Okay, so Mike gets these. I'll put them together in a packet and get the mic in. So and, then, you'll and, like then you, and then you can get Matt's yeah. signature. And then it's all oh. going to go back to the select board. So this, so this was all. That's all of the town, or that's um, do you are you going to need that? Um, that's part of the form that is sort of an administrative who you guys want, right? To do. You need specimen signatures, but is that for is that is that all from the town, or is that and I and I, I'm just in other words, is that is that the treasurer, is that is that the chair of the select board, is that people from the elect? Oh, it's. And to me, that's a, I mean, the treasurer seems like a candidate to be on that list, but that's the bond bank wants to know if, if we get a call or an email from someone from the town of the heart, hardware, who are we allowed to connect with okay. when it comes to this loan? So anyone who you want to be and you know, the bond but, bank to respond but is it, to. Is it the select board who's authorizing or is it the electric department who's authorizing? There's one, there's one form here. Yeah. Um, that's another one where I think like where there's individual signatures. I mean, it should be filled out by the elect because they're the ones who are going to be interacting with regard to this loan. It should be signed. Um, okay, so is is the is the town comfortable with that? That is paying attention. Okay. The, there needs to be authorization. Somebody yeah, to talk to, to talk about to to be to act on behalf yeah. of the borrower. Okay, all of us. If somebody comes up with respect to the loan, so this is after closing, and so they want to know if, if and this is a standard thing. You always yeah. have authorized yeah. signatories. Should that be people from the electric department? Should it be people? Should it be? Should it be David and and Mike? Should it be? I don't know. Uh, I mean, well, I mean, it's, 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 it's customer. Well, in this case, it it's all to me like the financial reporting. Um, the it seems like this is a, this is an electric department loan, so, so it's gonna you definitely gonna want to say bad. She right. understands that, but the degree. I mean, who? It would make sense to probably have the treasurer too, yes. because this is a loan in the name of the town. Okay, so but we need, but we need to authorize. So we, then we need to have a motion to authorize people, and then somebody needs to go and get their sig signatures. Because yes. we don't have a standing authorization for people to to do this. So if we're saying. That we're authorizing um, Beth and Mike and Tanya. That sounds correct to me. I'm the Chase, right? Yeah, I'm the Chase. Is the clerk and Is it the mayor or no? E-O. The Tony or T-O-N. 
I can run down stairs. That's correct. Okay. okay. So I'm going to make a motion. I move that uh, we authorize Beth Essery, Mike Sullivan, and Tonya Chase to act on behalf of the electric department in matters relating to the loan from the Vermont Bond Bank that is expected to close on March 26, 2024. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Show passes. So, um, Mike, once you get this filled out, so there'll be those three names, titles, and each person has to sign, then I can sign the resolution. You got it. Okay. Anything else that we need to? I'll just, I'll circulate a clean version of the rest of it tomorrow. And Beth is handling the written conditions and um, And then all the other stuff, we just authorize people to sign. So we're, we're good, to, good to go, I think. Yes? Yes. Uh, the, the resolution is essentially authorizing what the treasurer and chair to sign individual signature on. Right. And so we just like, authorize people for afterwards to, yep. to sign. Yeah. OK. So do you need any other signature for yes. me on anything? So I have two signatures here. That I need to get more of. I need to oh, all you, and all you need is one more. Yeah, okay. I mean, if you. It's no problem. The receipt. That would be the treasurer signs that. Says our electric department. It's done. It's okay. Done. <laughs> it's a receipt. Okay. Receiving. No problem. <laughs> um, uh, receipt, and then I have a treasurer certificate. Those are both Tanya. And then I have the loan agreement, which will be the clerk and Eric. Okay, so this is I'm getting as well. These are all time. And then okay. in fact, I have the letter from Michael Goggin. Gallhagen. The commitment letter. Yeah. That's okay. And that's signed, so I'll get that to you. So that's on the Words. And everyone should have copies made before it goes out. In the need, there, buddy. Yes. You're going to call it. I will. So I will never. Well, I'll send an email first. So Dave. Yeah. Yeah, you can call it. Okay. So everything got signed here that you need signed. Uh, Other than more signatures. Anything that could be signed here right now. That's okay. Um I understand why 30 minutes was allotted. Yeah, all I saw was the was the was was that was the loan agreement. And I was thinking, why is this okay? No, I don't. <laughs> then, given that we've run over that amount of time, yeah, I don't have a suggestion. But is there any reoccurring that we'd like to do? I'm just. I think some of the other stuff may go fast. Okay, fantastic. Um. So the next item on the agenda. So we want to be live for eight minutes. I think so. Unless some, does anybody have anything else for you? Like. Well, you can say it if you want. Don't need me. I know it's rude. Well, I'll just go home and tune in. <laughs> no, but thanks for coming. It was definitely yeah. Great. No, this was very cool. I I understand that this is a bit of a challenge. I mean, it's a challenge because this is a brand new program that the Bank has never done before. So 
sort of a learning curve with everyone, but it's always a challenge as we know when, with, with hardware and the electric department, exactly how to do these things. So um, I appreciate that. And I uh, thank you guys for, for taking the time. Thanks, thanks, for, thanks for getting it done. Yeah. And I'll just plant the seed that Eli and I did talk about who and how and why and what was going to be signed where. And we said, you all still have an MOU out there somewhere that's never been developed. Oh, in general. Yeah. Right. Just about I, that sort of yeah. the interaction right. between the electric yeah. 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 I think would have helped. But it's more than just financing. It's like property. Yeah. 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 Conveyance yeah. property, that kind of stuff. So it's always been on the agenda to discuss. Right. Probably, yeah, but yeah. I think not today. Yeah, no, no. I'm just, I'm just saying it's still out. Yeah, when you're dealing with flooding. Well, and I would say that you know the town needs something from the electric department. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it is. Yeah, um, it would be um, good you know, in terms of the obligation, but that, I mean, because we're going to, we know what's exactly. Oh, for the yeah, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't think there'll be a concern. Well, the government's also mandated that we take the the monies and it goes to this bond. So this land we could go do something. Yeah. Um, it's cheap money. Yeah. Yeah. Very cheap. All right, thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, the next item on the agenda is um brief rate increase discussion. I don't know what yeah I just wanted to make sure everybody you know, we got our 1.97 and I just wanted to make sure everybody understands we're still targeting another rate increase probably right at the end of the year. The 2% is the bridge us over for Q1 2025. Yeah. Um, well, even before that, did you have any? No, I talked to Eli, he said, you got a lot of work to do before you call me city farmers. So I talked to city farmers. So we're talking about an interruptible provision now. What is <laughs> And Steve's response was, well, you're going to have to do a full uh, case cost and service study, and you don't have the data available until you get AMI to do that. He said, even if you have the data, it's going to be a year long effort with the PUC to get that. There's got to be a way to do it this year. And uh, I'm just telling you what he said. And I said, well, it's going to be that long. This issue is going to be over before we can even get that done. We'll have the capacity to give them whatever they want before then. I'm not sure I followed that entirely, but if this is about interruptible rates, and what we need is that is that what we're yes because I you know shoot I've been involved in interruptible rates at plants for decades long before AMI existed so I'm I'm yep. puzzled as to how AMI connects into interruptible rates and so, Lynn I'm sure you were involved in interruptible rates before I there was any interruptible rates yep. in, the, in, in the early 1980s so the yeah. about is that we have to be able to prove to the yeah. PUC no, leave that up. whatever we do ends up being yeah, revenue like neutral to AGD. Make sure it's up. Yeah. And we would be throwing darts into the into the air because we don't have any data to make an argument with. You can come up with data. Okay. My point is it's going to be a large endeavor. It's going to take a lot of time. I'm not saying it's impossible. But I'm saying we're gonna we're not gonna need an interruptible provision because we're gonna be able to serve whatever they want before that. And we're just gonna serve them, and we're not gonna charge them with additional for doing that. The interruptible was how we got comfortable with with not putting an escalation of 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 costs on on the yellow barn project because we said okay the big load is actually we'll be able to interrupt it so we'll never see the load that would push us into the sense of, into the contingency area and you're saying now you're comfortable that that's not going to be an issue 
Yes, because Eric gave the schedule of your planned loading, which is what we requested as part of that discussion with the interruptible rate, and he's December of this year. Yeah. Q1 for full load 2025, right? So we don't well, need so what you're saying is we don't need it, we don't need an interruptible rate to meet the needs of right. the Yellow Barn project. That's correct. I need you. That's fine. Well, that's good. Right. That's fine. None of us understood that. Sorry. <laughs> that had not been conveyed. Huh. Okay. Um well that was just since your email was me, so it wasn't conveyed. Okay, so the next item on the agenda, unless somebody has any other questions about the rate increase, uh, is the general manager's report. Um, any questions or comments? I mean, I had to yes, you go first. I'm taking note. Okay, my, my question is about the, the, the dam safety stuff. Yeah. Um, because you make the statement that it's going to cost us a lot of money. Um, and I guess my question is, we need to know what their recommendations are. Are they reasonable? Are they necessary? If these are things that we should be doing, because, it may, because the dams aren't safe unless we do them, or aren't safe enough unless we do them, then we need to be doing them. So the most recent recommendation program made on Bullpet Dam, for example, uh, included a full uh, hydrologic study by a team of four different consulting engineers. And we got I put in on on a freebie for that, and we got awarded uh, the full eval. So they actually had I couldn't believe how much data they had on our dam, original drawings, and all kinds of stuff I've never seen before. And at the end of the conference calls and everything, they issued a report that basically said the dam's in really good shape. Um, so I'm not worried about Wolken as much as I would have been prior to that. I, I was also confused. This read as if there was an external push for specific upgrades. Right. So what's going on is the dam safety program historically <laughs> has come and done their inspections every year. They give us a report and sometimes, uh, for example, the last time some people got a hold of the report on East Long Pond, it was quite a public outcry that, oh, Heart of Electric isn't doing anything, the dam's going to fall over. Totally not true. Uh, so we went out and took a bunch of action to remedy their concerns. Uh, but there's no teeth to what the dam safety program. They could say, oh, your dam's going to fall over. Go do this. No, I, I understand. But but are the previous reports specifying things that we should be doing, even though there are no teeth? That's that's my question. In other words, yeah. if there are things that we should be doing to make the, the, so that the dams are safe. We do those. So, for example, at East Long Pond, they say, oh, this chunk of vegetation over here could affect the toe of the dam. You don't want those roots getting in all the yep. rocks. Get those trees out. We'll go get rid of the trees. So, so are we worried about non-safety issues? What's the potential cost that we incur? So if they came in and said at East Long Pond, I just keep using East Long Pond because yep. there's no access. Mm -hmm. You can't get to the, you can't get equipment to the dam. You'd have to build a road to get there. <clears throat> so if they said, oh, you need to change the headworks here. Mm -hmm. That would be hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. And why would we want to spend that? It does nothing for our rate payers. It doesn't save our rate payers any money. It doesn't make our rates any money. It is of no benefit. It's only hurt for our customers. Do we have any indication that they will be asking us to do things? They The program is pushing to get full control with full teeth where they will be able to say, go fix that headworks. I understand. Well, they're, 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 but they're not going to say that the headworks aren't safe. That's what, in their view, if we dispute, if we think they are, then we're, then we're going to have a litigation situation if, if we dispute it. But 
We're trying to understand, is there an indication that they will be requiring us to do things that you don't want to do, or you don't think we should be doing? I believe there will be requirements on us in the future to spend money that we don't have to spend on. Okay. And but we don't, even if we spent it, it does nothing for our customers. I understand, but we don't have an well, indication of what banks would... don't do anything for our right. customers. Exactly. That's 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 a separate issue. <laughs> okay. So that's the issue. I mean, how do we go? Oh, okay. If you see, we're going to go spend this money to fix this dam. It does nothing for our customers. Now we're in, we're in a mess. I see. So it's the overall utility of the dam, not the particular issues at hand. Exactly. Got yes, it. sir. Sorry, Got I didn't it. explain it before, but yes, no. that's it. Got it. So, I mean, we have some things pending on East Long. Yep. That, you know, these this information should be factored into whatever street we end up going down in that equation, too. Um, Mr. Chairman, I have a question, and, and it's not, it doesn't require an answer now. You, 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 for, Customer confidentiality reasons you cryptically referred to some bills. Um, can you share the correspondence on those with the commissioners? Yes. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments on the general manager's report? Perhaps at another time, could we have some more context on the granite quarry requested upgrades and then a, a departure from that project? Um, just not aware of what's going on. Yeah, so the I can give you that 30 second one right now. Great. So we had the yellow barn project looking to do something. We had another dealer, the car dealership mm -hmm. looking to put in a big charge station. Mm -hmm. And we also had the quarry to the mm -hmm. south on the south circuit looking to add in a mega lot of load down. All three of them, big projects, yep. big items. Uh, the quarry was go, go, go. Yeah, don't worry about what it's going to cost. Uh, but when the phone company and Brian worked up their costs and I put in the engineering stuff, I said, hey, it's going to be a huge amount of money. Here's the ballpark number. Mm -hmm. It's going to be at least this much. Do you want us to proceed and, and go through, you know, a month of work and get you a real number? And they said, no. Got it. Thank you. I think they will eventually because they're expanding their operations up there and more generate uh, more generators or more maintenance, more fuel, more pain in the rear, and more emissions permits. I think they will in the future, but um, the other the if I understood the what the situation is um with the with the union is they're gonna be coming to us with a proposal. And so there's no, nothing for us to do until we get that proposal. Unless we wanted to give them a proposal such as the one I emailed you about. When did you email? Prior to the last meeting. Okay, I sent you an email saying we may or may not want to consider an MOU to extend the agreement as it sits and just do wage increase as we've done the last two times. Yeah, okay. No, I'm not going to pretend to. But anyways, it's not, not, it's not a big deal. Yeah. If we're not that super yeah. interested in it, we don't have to do it. Okay. All right, which takes us then uh, to the procurement policy. Boy, nobody liked all the working pictures and all that stuff. We, 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 we just took it off. We took it off. That was a lot. A lot of Um. I think we talked last time back that you confirmed that we have been complying with this procurement policy. Yes. So with all the stuff about sealed bids and um, getting proposals and things being fixed price, 
We uh -huh. are in compliance because the type of work that we had done is only by a limited number of vendors and it's who we already had working relationships with. And yeah, I've discussed this with FEMA. And so we are in compliance with the way we've already gotten our vendors and the work done. Good. Because I assume that we have to aggregate, you know, we can't say, okay, it's, it's this, this part of the project costs this much. And so it's under the threshold and that's under that part. You have to aggregate across the whole project. Okay, good. Uh, Is it just this one page, Beth, that needs a sign? And and then it was just a signet. It's the whole uh, policy, but it was just the last page that had a place for signature. And then then we talk about majority of representatives present. Which seems an odd word. And I assume that it's talking about commissioners, but it it just seemed odd. And then it talks about the board. Can we change the word to commissioners? I'm on page um, three. Indeed. Thank you. That's where I was wondering where you. I'm sure we can. But let me let me pull that up. It just didn't make any sense talking about. Yeah, it's, we can make changes. This was a this was their their um, draft template. We just kind of popped it up. So making changes, I think, are no problem. Yeah, we can absolutely. We're not doing a material change. Let's I'm just see. making sure I get the right spot where you're referencing that. Uh, um, it's on, on page. Did you say on page three? Three in the second line of D. As in, as, as in December. Okay. And you want it changed how? Change representatives to commissioners. Okay. I don't know if anybody else had any comments or questions about the policy. Is there a motion to adopt the policy as attached to the agenda? I move to adopt the policy as attached to the agenda here. Thank you. Uh, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any I think so. Okay. Um, so this is the 18th day of March. Okay. Um, any questions or comments about the financial statements? I have one question. This, you know, we have, this time of year, we've got one month, which doesn't really tell us much of anything. And I'm just wondering, and it's really a question for you, Beth, could we do like a 12-month rolling average? Um, not a rolling average, but a rolling total um, that would be for compare, you know, sort of comparing to the previous 12 months or, or breaking the budget into it. I, I, I just, it's just to look at one month or two months doesn't really tell us yep. anything. It doesn't tell us anything about trend. It doesn't tell, you know. Yeah, I can get you whatever you want. I'm just trying to make sure I understand what you're looking for. Um, so, so, so go ahead. We were towards the end of the year, we had, well, we were at the end of the year, we had 12 months. We had 12 months actual, we had 12 months budget. Okay. We were into a new year, and because of the lag of billing and everything else, we have one month, which doesn't tell us really anything. Gotcha. Um, and 
if we could have the last 12 months of actual, so January back through February of last year, and then take the budget for the same period, it would give us a comparison of how we're doing. And to do that, at, at least for, you know, until we've got six months or something, you know, okay. or, 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 maybe, or maybe we keep it going so that it, it gives us a better idea of where we sort of, how we're doing. Um, um, for every component of the financial or just mainly this year, like the up, the operating statement? Uh, the, the main stuff, yeah, the operating statement. Yeah, okay. you don't have to go through. No, I wasn't looking for each of okay. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'll put something, I'll have it at something ready for you at the meeting next month. And then if you want to make any adjustments to it, we can, I can still do that as well. That'd be great. But I'll get something together for next month's meeting. Thank you. On the three year comparison, um, I don't, what have, page, what I don't have a page number. No. There are no page numbers? No. Uh, it was the third it, of the yeah. The third page. Yep. Okay. Uh, Operating revenue of 23 at 1.1 1 .1 million. Where, 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 what, what? Top line. Yeah. Why am I not saying? Um, different new year. Yeah, you're looking at. Yep, twenty three top line upper Okay, yeah. Yep, I was yeah. just wondering where that number came from. Sorry. Yeah, it does. Oh, but it's just for January. For January, two thousand twenty three. Why it looks so high? Yep. Is that the question? Correct. Okay, that's when we had to recognize the additional revenue that we were going to be billing. Uh, I believe it was Sugarman, that ah. client. Yep. So we had to recognize the revenue that month Thank that you. we started billing them. No sense to anybody that Saudi owners make us work. It's accounting. I think we spent some time talking about it last time. Yeah. Okay, the next item is <laughs> customer project. And I'm just looking for what we were discussing last time. And, um, I think we need to, um, I think the information that we give a customer when they come in is inadequate. Um, I have seen other invoices for a similar stage from other utilities that have more detail um, that at least would break down, you know, the transformer or lines and poles and um, I, I and I think we need to change the policy. I think we have a very customer unfriendly policy. Um, and I don't think customers can tell what they're being charged for in the underlying policy and the tariff itself. It, it refers to charges that are set forth in the tariff and there aren't any. Um, some utilities do specify, you know, how much per foot of this kind of line and how much per foot of that kind of line and what poles cost and we don't have any of that. So how about I work up a, here's what it is today, here's what we can give a breakdown that would make sense to people, let y'all review it and see if that 
meets. That's that's fine, but I I we need to see something before the next meeting. Okay. As far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. It, it's, I don't think a customer can tell what they're being charged for. And and I think, again, uh, it, it needs to also distinguish between things that they have to pay for when, because we're ordering stuff and, and, and what they pay for before we start construction, but in a more limited time frame before we start construction. Okay. Um, I don't have anything else on that subject unless anybody else does. In which case, um, I think we're going to executive session to discuss an employee matter. Um, is there a motion? So uh, what we need to do is we need to stay on Zoom, but we've got to take the recording off. Yeah, we're good. Hold on, maybe. And then how can we, can you make um, Roger a co-host and then he can close the recording? Well, I'll close the meeting. All we need is the time you come out of the executive session. That's fine, but you don't want to leave the Zoom link open. Oh, right, right. Paul, Paul. Well, I'm going to take this with me because it's got the recording. Okay, we're not recording the executive session. We don't record the executive session. Okay, so the recording needs to, will need to come off. And, and. Are we in executive session yet? No, we're not in executive session because you're not going to be in the executive session. Um, and Beth's not going to be in the executive session. Um, and so but I could be until I leave. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Uh, I, I can do the same thing. We did this before when I left, and I just went, How did I do that? I left this, and then I came and got it when you were done. That's what I did. So it's fine. I'll go down. And I think we're all set. I'll just leave this right here. And turn the recording off. Okay. So, um, all right, I'll make a motion. I move that we go into an executive session to discuss an employee matter. Is there a second? Second. Favor? 